So I want to do conversion word problems. And this really is, this is like the last piece of conversions for us. And once we're done with word problems, we will go back and I want to do like a little refresher on metric and King Henry and then give you guys a mini quiz. I want to do a refresher for Gallon Man uh, and give you guys a mini quiz. And then we'll do the other customary conversions like these ones back here. We have to, oops, sorry, line up your units. I want to do a little mini quiz there, but this is like the last big piece that we have to do before we can start assessing on anything. Um, it's going to be a little bit different because since it is word problems, I'm not going to ask you to write any of the word problems down because that's just obnoxious. But I will give you on Schoology, I will put up a PDF of the word problems so that you can practice solving them on your own. And I will also put up a PDF of my notes for math like I normally do so that you can see, you know, what I boxed in and what I changed and that way you can practice on your own too. So I want to go through and I want to, um, well, I want to write down the steps first because I feel like that would be important for you guys to have. And I'll also put those up for you too. But I'm going to ask you um, just for right now, if you can get out either your math notebook if you have it, or if not, that's fine. If you can just give me something for you to write on. Um, I want you to write down the steps for the conversion word problem. So I'm going to show you uh, my math notebook and I'm just going to have, honestly, I think you only need one thing to write with for right now. Um, so just like a pencil or a pen, something. I'm moving my computer around, so give me one second. Something for you to write with. Here's my notebook and I think... Oops, that's um. This is my notebook. I'm just showing you my my table. <laughs> um, I need to go back in my notebook because I want to say that this should be lesson six. Nope, lesson seven. So then, at the top of my page, um, in my notebook, I'm just going to put lesson. Wow, lesson seven. I'm saying wow because I keep showing you my table instead of my notebook. So I'm sure that's not very helpful for you. Um, at the top, I'm just gonna put a heading, let's just say conversion word problems. So remember, if I'm talking too fast or if I'm writing too fast, then you just pause me and whenever you're ready, you unpause me and you keep going. So my heading just says lesson seven and conversion word problems up at the top. So the only thing I'm really going to ask you to write down throughout this entire video is just the steps. That way, when I ask you to practice, you can practice on your own. So there's only five um, and some of them are just they're not really things necessarily that you have to do. It's just more or less things that you're going to have to mentally think about as you try to work through the problem. So I'll put a number one. And the first thing I need you to do whenever you see, I want this to, there we go. Whenever you see a conversion word problem, I want you to find me the sentence that has the question mark. Because the first thing you're going to have to do is you're going to have to mentally ask yourself, what unit do they want the answer in? So remember, if you need to pause it, go ahead and pause it. And when you're ready and you're finished writing, unpause the video. What conversion word problems you guys are going to ask you to do is they're going to ask you to change one of the units and leave one of them completely alone. So when you read through the word problem and you figure out, well, what unit do they want the answer in? Whether it's liters and milliliters and a word inches and feet, yards and miles, whatever it is, they're going to want you to only change one and then you'll leave the other one completely alone. So we're not going to end up changing two things. So the very first thing you do is you figure out what unit they want the answer in because it lets you know which one you're going to have to change. Once you figure out what unit you're going to change, then you're going to have to convert that unit. So my step two is going to say, convert the other unit. And if that doesn't really make sense, then we'll go through it when we look at the word problems together. 
So step one is for you to mentally figure out what unit they want the answer in. And that's literally you just reading through the word problem. Once you know, you take the other unit, you're going to need to convert the other unit. Step three is going to say rewrite the conversion, which I know makes no sense, but I will go over it with you when we go through the word problems. Remember, if I'm going too fast, pause me. Write down what you need to write, and when you're ready, you unpause me. Number four, it's a little bit longer of a step. So I'm going to put reread, which I know is just absolutely your favorite thing to do in the world is to reread things. But if you're going to take all the time to convert and convert correctly, then there's no reason that you should make a mistake on the second half of the problem. Because you're going to have to figure out when you reread, are you adding or subtracting? So there's no point in you going through and you converting right or changing the right one and then you get lazy and don't want to reread it and then you do the second half of the word problem wrong because then you're doing a bunch of work for no reason and that's not what I want. So number four, your favorite thing in the world, I'm asking you to reread the word problem. I'm going to put something right underneath this. It's still part of step four. Okay, remember, if you need to pause, pause me. And when you're ready, you can unpause me. I'm going to write down maybe like a little star, like an X with a line through it. Okay, I'm going to let this focus a little bit more. Sorry, this is, there we go. And I'm going to put... Check for keywords slash phrases. And all I'm really asking you to do is decide, are you adding or subtracting? Okay. So step four is a little bit longer. Step one, you need to read the word problem and decide what unit do they want the answer in, which really means for step one, you guys, you're just finding the question mark. And then you're reading that sentence and figuring out between the two units they're giving you, which one do they want the answer in? Number two, you need to convert the other unit and then you're gonna rewrite the conversion. We're definitely gonna work on those two. Number four says reread the word problem and you're looking for keywords and key phrases and you're looking for the words and phrases that are going to tell you are you adding or subtracting. The last step here for step five is going to say add or subtract to get your final answer. Add or subtract to get your final answer. Now I know that most of the times when we write down the steps in the beginning, a lot of the times those steps, they just don't really make sense to you guys. But I'm going to keep referencing them as we go through. I think there's like six, five or six word problems I wrote down to go through for this video. So as we go through the word problem, I'm going to say, now this is step one and this is step two and this is step three so that you can get comfortable with trying it because I want you to try them on your own when we're finished. So you do not need to write down the word problems. I don't want you to write down the word problems. I have a link here for this in the same folder as this lesson um, on Schoology of the word problems where they're blank, which means it's just the word problems and my work isn't there. But then I also have linked my notes that go along with this video so that you can look at what the answer is supposed to be, where it has my notes, but you can also try them on your own, okay? So from here on out, I don't need you to write down anything. All I'm really asking you to do is just really pay attention to what I'm doing so that you can go ahead and you can practice on your own. 
If you have a printer and mom and dad will let you, it might be beneficial to you to print out the blank notes where it doesn't show all of my work. That way you can follow along with me. And if not, then that's okay because you can just look at them in the video and then you can look at my notes where I'm actually taking the notes um, in the, the PDF file when we're finished. So I'm gonna flip my notebook page over. Here we go. So this is still, you guys, still lesson seven. You do not need to write these down. I really just want you to focus, okay? So let's say this is the first word problem we're looking at. Jill has six gallons of lemonade for her family picnic. If her mom buys three more quarts of lemonade, how many quarts of lemonade will be available for Jill's family picnic? Now, here's what I'm talking about, because every conversion word problem is going to give you two different units, two different names. So if you think about this, they mention just for number one, two different types of units. It says Jill has six gallons of lemonade. Well, gallons is a unit name. And then it goes on to say, if her mom buys three more quarts of lemonade. So gallons and quarts, those are the two different units that number one is talking about. But remember, our step one was to figure out what unit do they want the answer in. So if you guys can find the sentence with the question mark, it's asking how many quarts of lemonade will be available for Jill's family picnic. Because the question mark sentence is asking about quarts, that means they want the answer in quarts. So guys, that's just me doing step one, me reading through the word problem. I'm figuring out the two different units they're talking about, but ultimately I'm finding the unit that they want the answer in. They're asking how many quarts she's going to have available. That means they want the answer in quarts. Now, your step two, we wrote down, convert the other unit. So if they want the answer in quarts, I'm not going to change these quarts. I'm going to change the gallons. And I know that I'm going to change the gallons because this is a different unit name than they answer. Quarts and quarts, they match. They want the answer in quarts, so I'm going to leave this alone. But I need to change this. So for step number two, I'm going to use the space here that's available. This tells me that I'm going to take these six gallons and I need to figure out how many quarts that's going to be equal to. And I know I have to change it to quarts because they want the answer in quarts. It's the only other unit name they're giving me. Now, here's really the big thing with the word problems. Because you have to be able to think back and mentally decide, is it a King Henry conversion? Is it a gallon man conversion or is it going to be another customary conversion where we just line up the units? But I know that if they're mentioning gallon and quartz, gallon is gallon man. So that tells me when I go ahead and I do this problem and I try to figure out how many quartz are going to be in six gallons, that tells me I can draw the gallon man. And I know I don't have a ton of room here, but I can just at least draw one. And I can count through it six times because six is my number here, okay? So I remember that there should be four Qs because there are four quarts in a gallon. So two up top, two on the bottom. Now, if you're thinking about this, I don't really have to go any farther than this because all they want me to get to is quarts. They want the answer in quarts. But I'll go ahead and I'll fill out the rest of the gallon, man, just for our reference. In every quart, in every Q, there are two pints. So I'm going to go ahead and put two P's in my Q's. I'm going to try to use different colors here so we can see them. In every pint, there are two cups, and it's going to get tiny. Yeah, we'll, we'll put the cups. We don't really need to worry about the ounces because I don't really have enough room to put the eight inside of every cup. But uh, you get the gist. Okay, what this is asking me for though, you guys, is just me converting six gallons or six G's 
into quarts. And my quarts starts with Q, which really just means I'm going to count how many Qs or quarts I see in six gallons. I didn't draw six gallons, I only drew one gallon, but I can count through this six times. And I'm just going to put little tally marks, okay? So I'm counting the number of quarts or the number of Qs that I see in six gallons. So this is one Q, two Qs, three Qs, four Qs, or four quarts. But that's only for one gallon because I've only gone through the G one time. So I'm at four. This would be five, six quarts, seven quarts, eight quarts. I've gone through it twice, that's two gallons. And I'm gonna keep going through it until I get to six gallons. So I was at eight quarts, nine, 10, 11, 12 gallons. That's my third time through, so that's three gallons. But I have to keep going because I need to get to six. I'm at 12, so this would be 13 gallons, 14 gallons, 15 gallons, 16 gallons. 17 gallons, 18 gallons, 19 gallons, 20 gallons. And that was my fifth time through. So one, two, three, four, five tally marks. I need to go through one more time because I need to get myself to six gallons and I've only gone through five times. So I was at 20. This would be 21 quarts, 22 quarts, 23 quarts, and 24 quarts. Now that's six times through. So when I went through the gallon or the G six times, I counted 24 Qs or 24 quarts. So that tells me that my six gallons are equal to 24 quarts. Now at this point, we have done step number one. We have figured out what unit they want the answer in. We've done step number two. We've converted the other, the other unit. So for number one, if you remember, it wanted my answer in quarts. So I wasn't gonna change the quarts, I was gonna change the gallons. So we've now converted those six gallons. We just figured out and counted through that six gallons was equal to 24 quarts. So our step three was to rewrite the conversion. And this is what I mean by that. I want to take my six gallons and I'm literally going to cross them out. I don't want to keep talking about gallons when they want the answer in quarts. So we just figured out that those six gallons or these six gallons are equal to 24 quarts. So that's what I'm going to write down. Now, everything in this word problem has the exact same unit name. Quarts, quarts, and quarts. So that was step three, just crossing this out and rewriting the conversion that you made. Number four, your favorite step, I know it is, is to reread the word problem. We're gonna reread because now everything has the same unit name and we're gonna check for keywords or key phrases because somewhere in this word problem, it's gonna tell me, am I gonna add these numbers together or am I gonna subtract these numbers? So this is now what number one says. Jill has, not six gallons, we rewrote it, 24 quarts. So Jill has 24 quarts of lemonade for her family picnic. If her mom buys three more quarts of lemonade, how many quarts of lemonade will be available for Jill's family picnic? Now, there's nothing in here that says total or in all or all together, which I know are like really big key phrases for us for addition but it's saying that the mom is gonna buy three more. So she's gonna take 24 and she's gonna get three more or add three more to what she already has. So this more right here, that's my key word for addition. So the, Jill has 24 quarts of lemonade and the mom's gonna buy three more. She's gonna add three more to what she already has. So the question very simply is saying, how many more, I'm sorry, that's not right. How many quarts of lemonade will be available for Jill's family picnic? Well, if she had 24 quarts and the mom buys three more, I'm at 24, so this is 25, 26, and 27. So when they're asking how many quarts are available for the mom's family picnic, 27 quarts are available. 
because that's what 24 plus 3 would get me, which tells me that for number 1, this is my answer. Now, it might seem like, because I know some of you, some of you are going to be like, oh, that's so easy. But it is a lot when you have to do it on your own because you have to be responsible to do all five steps. Some of you are like, what are you talking about? That is not easy. That's a lot. But I have five, five word problems that I've written down and I'm going to go through all of them. So you guys know me. I love to talk. This video is probably going to be just as long as every other video. I'm not asking you to write anything down unless you are using the blank word problems to go through it as I go through it. And if all you're doing is watching and listening, that's fine. But you got to listen. Otherwise, you're not going to get anything out of it. I want to try number two. And we're going to go through the steps again. So remember, we wrote down that step number one was figuring out what unit they want the answer in. Which means when you find or you see the word problem, I want you to focus on the sentence that has the question mark in it. Because that'll tell you what they want the answer in. Number two says, Jeff needs three pounds of flour to bake 12 cakes. He buys 39 ounces of flour from a store. I'm sorry, I can't read right. He, <laughs> ah, he buys 39 ounces of flour from store A. It might just from a store. I probably wrote it wrong. Whatever, doesn't matter. How many more ounces of flour does Jeff need to buy in order to have three pounds of flour? Well, first things first, I can see that they mentioned pounds. So pounds is one of my units. But I also see that they mention the word ounces. So here are the two units they're giving me for question two is pounds and ounces. If we find the sentence that has the question mark in it, it's asking how many more ounces? I see the word ounces twice. Now that might be confusing because it does also say the word pounds, but I know you guys, a lot of you guys just glance and you just try to see the word. You have to actually read the sentence. How many more ounces of flour does Jeff need to buy in order to have three more? I cannot read. Holy Hannah. How many more ounces of flour does Jeff need to buy in order to have three pounds of flour? Okay. I think I just confused myself rereading this so many times. Because it says how many more ounces. Here we go. I think this is going to be confusing because I just confused myself. I think really what I should have, where I should have stopped just so that this makes sense. I think I should have just said, how many more ounces of flour does Jeff need to buy? So I'm going to get rid of this because I feel like having these words here are going to confuse you guys and I don't want to do that. So I'm going to quickly cross this out. I feel like that's going to be confusing for a lot of you and I just don't want that. So I'm going to get rid of the confusing part. We'll try again. Okay. Jeff needs three pounds of flour to bake 12 cakes. He buys 39 ounces of flour from store A. How many more ounces of flour does Jeff need to buy? There we go. Okay. So he needs three pounds and he has 39 ounces. But because they're asking how many more ounces and I see ounces twice, that tells me that I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to change these three pounds. But that means that I'm going to have to change those three pounds into ounces because they want the answer in ounces. So if they're talking about pounds and ounces, you guys have to start thinking, are they asking me to do King Henry? Are they asking me about the gallon man? Or are they asking me to line up my units for customary conversions? Now, ounces is a part of the gallon man but pounds is not 
There is a P in the gallon man, but that P stands for pints and pints and ounces are not, or sorry, pints and pounds, they're not the same thing. So if I look back here, cause this is just something I put up on my wall while I wanted to get this done for you guys, I'm gonna turn it around so that we can actually see. Um, it says one pound equals 16 OZ, but guys, those, that OZ is just ounces. So right here, I'm gonna circle it, there we go. That's the conversion that I'm looking for. So remember, the reference sheet, I have it linked for you on Schoology, and it, I just got all of this information right off that reference sheet. So I need the conversion of one pound equals 16 ounces. And I know that I need that conversion because those are the two unit names that they're giving me in the word problem for number two. So because I'm taking one of the conversions off of the conversion sheet, I'm not using the cheat for King Henry, oops, I'm not using the cheat for the gallon man, then that tells me I'm gonna have to line up my units because that's the only other thing that we've done. So I'm gonna go ahead and in the space that I have, I'm gonna write the conversion that I just got off that reference sheet. I'm gonna write down that one pound equals 16 ounces. Now they want the answer in ounces. So remember, we're not changing the ounces, we're changing the pounds. So I'm gonna line up what I'm changing, my pounds, and I'm gonna line up my units. Since we're changing three pounds, I'm gonna line up pounds with pounds. I'm not gonna line up pounds with ounces because those are two different unit names. When you line up the units, you're looking from beginning to end. I'm going from a one to a 16. And 16 is obviously bigger than one, so that tells me I'm multiplying. And I know that one times 16 is 16. So that tells me that to get from pounds to ounces, I'm multiplying by 16. On the bottom, I'm still moving in the same direction. My arrow is still pointing to the side that says ounces. It's not going in the opposite direction. It's going from pounds to ounces up top. It's going from pounds to ounces on the bottom as well. And because it's moving in the same direction, whatever you do up top, you're gonna also do on the bottom. Which tells me, in order for me to figure out how many ounces there are in three pounds, I'm gonna have to do three times 16. So you're more than welcome to do 16 plus 16 plus 16, or you can do 16 times three. But if you're gonna multiply, I need you to be able to put the bigger number up top. Okay, because three times 16 and 16 times three, they're gonna get me the exact same answer. Three times six is 18. So eight's on the bottom and one's up top on a plate. Three times one is three, plus another gives me four. So 16 times three just got me 48, which tells me that in three pounds, sorry, there are 48 ounces. We're not done. If we're thinking about our steps, we've only done step one and step two. We figured out what unit they wanted the answer in, and we converted the other unit. So our step three that we wrote down said convert the other unit. So that's me crossing out three pounds and writing down that it's equal to 48 ounces. When we reread number two, your favorite step I'm sure, I'm not gonna read that he needs three pounds because we just figured out that three pounds was equal to 48 ounces. I'm gonna read 48 ounces so that it's ounces, ounces, and ounces, okay? Jeff needs 48 ounces of flour to bake 12 cakes. He buys 39 ounces of flour from store A. How many more ounces of flour does Jeff need to buy? Well, how many more, you guys? That is a key phrase that tells me something. But if you can't recognize that that's a key phrase, think about what it's telling you. He needs this much. He only has 39 ounces. Well, I can see that 39 is not bigger than 48. It's less than. 
So he's at 39 and I need to get him to 48. So I can count up from 39 to get to 48 ounces. And however many fingers you go through, that's going to tell you how many more he needs. How many more is a key phrase for subtraction? So if you set up that he needs 48 ounces and he's already bought 39 ounces, he's not going to need that much more. I'm going to subtract 39 from 48 and it's going to tell me how many more ounces this guy needs so that he has all 48 ounces. Well, I can't take nine away from eight because you can't spend $9 if you only have $8. So I'm going to borrow. This four is going to become a three, and this eight now is worth 18. Well, 18 minus nine is nine, and three minus three is nothing. And zero nine is just nine. So when they're asking how many more ounces of flour does he need to buy, he needs to buy nine more ounces. And so that's number two, it's just he needs to buy nine more ounces. All right, so my long-windedness, I'm already, well, I'm already at 30 minutes. So let's say, I think I'm going to do number three with you, and I think I'm going to split this video into two videos where, uh, yeah, that's what I'm going to do. That's what I'm going to do. Okay, so let's do number three together. And then we'll do four, five, and I'll make another one for number six, and that'll be for the next, the next day. So let's do this. Let's do one more right now, and then we will, we'll make this one whole day. So let's say this is number three then. Remember that you're trying just to follow the five steps. And I know it's weird because we're going from jumping from one example to the next example, but... Um, what I need you to remember is whenever you get to a new word problem, then you are tr first trying to figure out what unit do they want the answer in because that's going to help you through the rest of the hurdles. So here's number three then. Number three says Chris has one meter of fabric. He only needs 86 centimeters of fabric in order to make his costume for the school play. How many centimeters will Chris have left over if he only uses 86 centimeters of fabric? Now, there are multiple units in here. I see meter, so that's one of my units. And then if we keep reading, it says he only needs 86 centimeters. So that's my other unit, meters and centimeters. But step one is to find the sentence with the question mark and find what unit do they want the answer in. Well, this sentence says, how many centimeters will Chris have left over if he only uses 86 centimeters? Now, this one's not really like number two because number two, there was both other unit names and I think that's where we would have got confused. This is still centimeters again. But that tells me that then they want the answer in centimeters. So if they want the answer in centimeters, I'm not going to change the centimeters. I'm going to change the meters, which means I need to figure out if the guy has one meter, I want to figure out how many centimeters would that be equal to because they want the answer in centimeters. So I need you to think right now, meters and centimeters. Is that King Henry? Is that the gallon man or is that customary conversions? Like, oops, that's just my house. Like back here where you're going to have to line up the unit names, okay? But meters is a unit that King Henry measures. So if they're talking about meters and centimeters, that one's a little bit easier. That's King Henry. So I'm going to go ahead if I know that this is for King Henry and I'm going to write down the letters for King Henry died unexpectedly drinking chocolate milk. Remember that if it's just the unit name, there's no prefix in front, then that is your unit. So my one meter is right here. And I'm putting the one meter because that's what I have. I have one meter. I want to figure out how many centimeters that's equal to. 
Well, senti would be my prefix. But senti, and I can see it right here, it starts with a C. So that means that I need to get right here. So some of you at this point might be like, well, which one do I start at? Remember, you have to start on the side where you have both the number and the unit name. So looking at this example, I need you to figure out, would you start at one meter or would you start at centimeters? Well, I can't start at centimeters because this is where I have my question mark. This is where I have the unknown piece. I'm starting at meter because this is where I have the number and the unit name. So I'm going to start right here. Because I need to get to centimeters, I'm going to stop here or end here at centi. Well, to get from the unit, the meter, to centimeters, that is one, two, but it's two loops to the right. So I'm going to take the one meter, here's my one, and remember, there's no decimal, so I stick it at the back. And I'm going to move that decimal two times to the right. So it's one and two, two loops. And anytime we have extra empty loops, all you can do is put zeros there. So now I know that one meter really is 100 centimeters. So at this point, you guys, we've done step one. We figured out they wanted the answer in centimeters. And now we've done step two. We've converted the other unit of meters to centimeters. So I'm going to do step three, which is me rewriting the conversion. So when I go to reread this, I don't want to still read one meter. He now has 100 centimeters. Chris has 100 centimeters of fabric. And remember, when you go back to reread, you're rereading when everything has the same unit name to find a keyword or a key phrase because you still need to figure out, are you adding or subtracting? So here's three. Chris has 100 centimeters of fabric. He only needs 86 centimeters of fabric in order to make his costume for the school play. How many centimeters will Chris have left over if he only uses 86 centimeters of fabric. Well, leftover is my key phrase here, my two words. And I hope and hope and hope and hope and hope that at this point you know that leftover means subtraction. This kid has 100 centimeters, but he's not using all of them. He's only going to use 86, which means he should have something left over. So I'll take 100. I'm going to write in black so we can see it a little bit better. And I'm going to subtract 86 from it because they're asking me how many centimeters he's going to have left over. He's not using all 100 centimeters. Well, you can't do zero minus six because you can't spend six dollars if you don't have money and you can't borrow from somebody if they're broke. So you go to the next guy. This one becomes a zero. This would be a 10. But you still need to borrow money from him because you can't jump across. So this 10 really is a 9, and this 0 is worth 10. 10 minus 6 is 4. 9 minus 8 is 1, and that's a 0, and nothing minus nothing is nothing. This is telling me that I'm getting an answer of 14, and they wanted my answer in centimeters. So this is saying he should have six or sorry, 14 centimeters left over if he doesn't use all of it. But if you want to double check that you've subtracted correctly, take your 86 centimeters and add your answer to it, uh, 14. If we get 100, then that tells us we've subtracted correctly. Well, 6 plus 4 is going to give me 10. That's 8, 9, and 10 got to 100, that tells me that I subtracted right. So when it's asking how many centimeters he'll have left over, this kid should have 14 centimeters left over. So I'm deciding this as I'm going through the video. I'm gonna save number four, number five, and I will make another number six, and we'll make that word problems day two. So this is just gonna be word problems day one. I'm gonna give you um, an one exit ticket question that very closely matches number three.
So I'll tell you now, well, your exit ticket question will be a King Henry conversion. And I think I'm going to break it up for you so that I'm asking you certain questions like, which unit do they want the answer in? What unit are you going to have to convert? Uh, what if you, I'll figure out the way I want to word it, but I'm going to walk you through the exit ticket question so that it's not as much. And then for the next two days of math, we'll do three more word problems together. And then I'm going to give you some for you to practice on your own. So all I really want you to do is 